it's graphics programming part 2. First, let's recap what happened in part 1. I wanted to make a system that would allow me to support multiple combinations of graphics API, operating system, and graphics style. My plan was to break things down into separate layers that contain code specific to certain requirements. So far, I've got one layer for setting up OpenGL on Win32, another layer for setting up D3D11 on Win32, and then a layer for everything that is general to any graphical Win32 application and not tied to the graphics API. When I started, I had some idea about how I might want to organize this, and now it actually exists, so I can talk more specifically about how it's actually organized. So let's do that. I have several concrete layers, and each of those also has an abstraction layer that hides something about the concrete layer. In the first arc, I focused on abstractions that hide the OS. First, there's the general graphics layer, which hides the specific operating system used to implement general graphics features. Then I have an OpenGL layer, which hides the operating system used to set up a functioning OpenGL context. And I have a D3D11 layer. And in a way, this hides the operating system in the same sense. But since when you wrap D3D11, you still know that you have to be on Win32, it isn't really true that it's hiding the Win32 dependency in this case, but it's still organized the same way so that it'll all fit together nicely. Okay, that's what I have so far. So what's part two going to be about? This time, I want to focus on the renderer. The renderer is the part that directly depends on the graphics API. I'll need to implement a concrete renderer that supports all the features that I want, and then I'll need to set up an abstraction layer that hides the graphics API. In this arc, I will narrow my focus down to just OpenGL uh, to implement the concrete renderer. I'll sketch out the abstraction API, and I will skip over doing anything like D3D11 or other APIs because I don't want to get bogged down in doing too much in one arc here. Notice this matches the same approach I used in the first arc. I implement a complete concrete version of one thing, design an abstraction for it, but I don't simultaneously have the second concrete thing there yet. And while I think that's okay, it does mean I need to keep in mind the abstractions aren't really tested. The concrete parts have been tested a little bit, but the abstraction is not tested until I have a couple of separate users and a couple of separate implementers. And right now I only have one implementer for my operating system hiding abstraction, and I'm only going to have one implementer for my graphics API hiding abstraction. So that means I just want to be careful to not rely and invest on these APIs too much until I've given them a more thorough testing. If I build a lot of software that relies on it and then it turns out it's busted in a couple of key ways and doesn't let me actually port to Linux or port to D3D11, then it's all kind of a waste and I didn't get the win of doing the abstraction. The first renderer I want to implement is a renderer for 2D tool style applications. There are only a few features I need for this part. I need some nice rectangle rendering, where by nice I mean the ability to round rectangles, uh, render rectangles as solid or as outlines, and give them color gradients. And I need the ability to put text on the screen and the ability to put icons on the screen. So that's my top-down feature wish list. From there, I can start to plan out what actual mechanisms I can use from the bottom up to get these effects. So first of all, text and icons are super similar. They're both just textured quads. And of course, rectangles and all the different kinds of rectangles I want are just different versions of an untextured quad. So I should be able to create a relatively painless single data path that works for all of these. That data path will just have to focus on quads with a couple of features that I can turn on and off for rounding, outlining, and texturing. I'm also going to need to work on a font parser and a little bit of processing on that font data to create something like an atlas. To get even more specific about the mechanisms I'm going to use here, let's talk about the specific OpenGL features that I can use to achieve each of those effects. I'll need to implement a shader, of course, and then I need that shader to support uh, quads that have rounded corners and outlining and color gradients and texturing. And then I want to be able to control which of those and put together different combinations of those relatively easily. I will want to rely on instancing, which will let me cut down on the amount of vertex data I have to transfer to the GPU for each quad that I try to render. And I'll need to be able to create a single channel 2D texture as well. 
For the font parsing parts, I'm going to rely on an external library. Ideally, one that works across platforms so that I don't have to implement this part when I go to other operating systems. Although, I might also want to be able to plug in operating system specific font renderers from time to time. So I'm thinking of trying out S2B TrueType and FreeType. They're both libraries I've used before, and I think they're good candidates for us to look at. So I'll take a look at those and make a decision about which one I like. Since I want the ability to swap these things out, I'm still going to need to develop an abstraction layer for this separately from everything else because I want to be able to swap out the font parser separately from swapping out the graphics API and the operating system. So there's another abstraction layer we need. The data that comes out of the font parser will get fed into the renderer features and all put together will have a text rendering system and an icon rendering system. My procedure for accomplishing all of this will be pretty much the same as what I did last time. Step one, isolate and implement concrete versions of all the building blocks that I will need. Step two, design an abstraction and move the concrete details from those isolated chunks into the main code base behind the abstraction. Step three, look at the constraints from the implementation side and the usage side and try to resolve them to make both sides happy. And from there, just keep iterating, add more concrete stuff, add more iterations on the res constraint resolution, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that's the plan for graphics arc part two. Next time I'll get started with all of this, so see you then. Mm -hmm.